Welcome back. We just finished talking to Ziggy. And to be honest, I'm still not quite sure why he's here. But let's move on to the other people in this little group here. And we're going from left to right, so next up is this gentleman. This is quite a party. Does the museum always have a big fundraiser when they open a new exhibit, Dr. Carter? No, but they've never had such an important exhibit opening here before. And I'm an important curator with an important salary, so the museum wouldn't have been able to keep me employed here without financial assistance. You must be very important for the museum to go to so much trouble. Naturally. The museum is lucky that I accepted this position as the head of their new Egyptian Antiquities Department. Why, my name alone will attract more visitors and more money to the museum. Any chance that the Tut Uncommon exhibit will make a stop here on its American tour? No. I'd hate to embarrass my relative by putting his Tutankhamun artifacts on display here. They pale by comparison to my own great discoveries, such as the Dagger of Amun-Ra. Of course. How silly of me to think otherwise. Yes, that was rather silly of you. Well, it's a good thing he's not full of himself, because otherwise he'd be quite annoying. Are we supposed to believe that this guy, Pippin Carter, is a relative of Howard Carter, the archaeologist who discovered the uh, tomb of Tutankhamun? And I've seen the Tutankhamun exhibit when it was in Los Angeles. It was very, very impressive. So, this dagger better be, like, the best thing ever. Anyway, we will, of course, question him. I doubt he knows our editor, though. I believe he was the Emperor of Rome just after Justinian. Yeah, that's not who we were talking about. So ask him about himself. It seems to be a topic he would be glad to talk about. That's me, you silly girl. If you want to arrange an in-depth interview, we'll have to schedule it later in the week. It's kind of annoying that the game always treats it as if you're asking these people about themselves in a way that indicates you don't know who you're talking to. How about Dr. Carrington? Dr. Carrington is a fine chap. He used to be in charge of the British Museum, you know. I ran into him several years ago when I visited the British Museum to consult with Dr. Butch. Seems odd that Dr. Carrington doesn't remember me, but I almost didn't recognize him either. He's getting old after all. Looks different. Memory's probably shot as well. That does seem odd. Probably not important. How about the detective? I'm sure you've had dealings with him, considering he's investigating the theft of this dagger. That's apparently the greatest archaeological find ever. According to you, anyway. Ah, uh, yes. Can't say I'm too impressed with Detective O'Reilly. Couldn't find a single bloody clue about the dagger burglary. And he has the nasty habit of chewing on grapes constantly. Probably to cover up the smell of the alcohol he drinks. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to be too impressed. He must have at least had done some investigation. It's interesting that they couldn't find any evidence. I'm pretty sure he won't know Rube, but still. A crod follow is some sort of miniature vegetable, isn't it? A potato, perhaps. I don't think so. How about low fat? He runs one of the local Chinese laundries. 
Pretends to be Chinese so he can get more business, but he has a terrible accent. I think I mentioned this before. This indication that Lofat's terrible accent was in fact intended to be terrible. Which I guess makes it a little bit better. Or a little bit less offensive, perhaps. How about our dad? A relative of yours, perhaps. Good guess. How about Ziggy? He doesn't seem to be the kind of person that Dr. Carter would associate with, but still. Rather an unfortunate name, I think. I don't think it's his real name. How about Dr. Miklos, who also works at the museum here, so I'm assuming he knows her. Dr. Miklos is rather eccentric, but she is well-educated. Received her training at one of the better universities in Athens, Greece. She's considered quite knowledgeable in the area of hieroglyphics, but her speciality is paleontology. She's fond of old bones. That's what she said. Also, is she ever, by the way. <laughs> Literally, not the dirty joke version. How about Yvette Delacroix? That trollop sleeps with everything that moves, and some things that don't. It's only by sheer strength of will that I've resisted her advances so far. As we'll come to learn, a fairly accurate descript description of Yvette. How about the security guard? He can't be too happy with him, considering the theft. Ah, oh, yes. I'm Lex, the security chief here. Not a particularly good one, obviously, since the dagger was stolen right from under his nose. And he's rather too intense for my tastes. He is pretty intense, so I can at least understand that. How about Ramses Najir, whom we still haven't met? Of course I know Ramses. There were several of them, actually. Ramses I was pharaoh during the 19th dynasty from 1307 to 1306 BC. But Ramses II made more of an impact on ancient Egypt. From 1290 to 1224 BC, Ramses II undertook a succession of gargantuan construction projects, which left his mark in the face of Egypt for thousands of years. His mortuary site at Thebes, the Ramesseum, contains a temple to Amun-Ra, a royal palace, a mortuary temple, and several storerooms. Actually, I was referring to Ramses Najir. Never heard of him. Well, that was, uh, enlightening. Not. Wrong Ramses. How about the Countess? The Countess was married to the former president of the Lion Decker Museum, Sterling Waldorf Carlton. A good chap, but uninspired. Now she has a sight set on Dr. Carrington. She must really like museum presidents, I guess. How about Steve? He uh, may be familiar with him from um, the unloading of the ex exhibit. Steve Dorian. The Stevedore with a ridiculous name. He's the fellow who helped unload my artifacts from the steamship. If it weren't for his odd name, I would have forgotten him entirely. Just because you acknowledge the fact that he has a ridiculous name doesn't mean I'm going to forgive you for giving him a ridiculous name, game. Uh, that's all the people. So how about places? Does he know our newspaper, for example? It's one of those local scandal periodicals. The term yellow journalism comes to mind when I think of it, which means it's not much of a newspaper at all, really. 
It's more like printed chewing gum for the uneducated masses. Now, wait a minute. The Tribune is a fine newspaper of the highest quality. I know because I happen to work there. You've just proven my point. Well, I never. Maybe that's your problem. I don't have to stand here and take this abuse. You're right, you don't. You could just go away and make us both happy. He's such a charming fellow. I'm almost hoping that he stole his own dagger. Just for the pleasure of getting to arrest him later. How about the police station? The police station is the last refuge for the incompetence in this city. However, if you're looking for a constable, I'd suggest one of the donut shops. I guess so. He seems to know about the laundry place. People tell me Low Fats is a good place to have laundry done, but he always puts too much starch in my shirts. This game is sure giving us an in-depth review of Low Fats laundry capabilities. How about the docks? That's where I arrived on the steamship Andrea Doria. I came over with the artifacts for the Egyptian exhibit. Apparently Dr. Carrington was also on that voyage from England, but I never ran into him aboard ship. Keeps to himself a lot, you know. Yes, we saw both you and Dr. Carrington disembark in the introduction. Although they did so separately. Oh, wrong tab. How about the museum? With a little work, I can turn the Lion Decker into a world-class museum. But that can wait a few months until they decide to make me the president. Dr. Carrington will have to find other employment, of course, but I'm sure some lesser museum would be happy to have him on their staff. Okay, sure. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. How about New York? Since you're new here, what do you think of New York? Isn't it exciting? I hate it. It's crowded, it's noisy, and you Americans have no concept of how the class system is supposed to work. You go around treating each other like equals, which I find very distasteful. He is a shining example of the reason why the U.S. didn't want to be part of England anymore. How about Speakeasy? Betting he's never been there, but still. If you're referring to the local drinking establishments, they are quite illegal, and I don't condone their existence. I do drink on occasion, but only when the finest wines are available. I don't doubt it. We can ask him about our stuff, which is usually pointless, but sometimes funny, like I've already said, so let's do it anyway. No thanks, I already have a notepad. Well, at least he isn't claiming to just remember everything, like some people in this game. How about the magnifying glass? Don't bother me with such silly questions. If it bothers you, it only makes me want to do it more. How about the water glass? It's a water glass. Just the thing if you require a drinking receptacle that holds liquids. That is what it's for. Can ask him about his year, which I'm sure is going well, considering. Except for the burglary, I guess. Would you say this has been a good year for you, sir? Well, let's see. I made the most important archaeological discovery of all time. Almost everyone on the planet knows my name, and I've clinched a curatorial job I've been after for years. Yes, I'd say it has been a rather good year. Hmm, seems to me you might have a problem. A problem? Such as? 
Well, you've accomplished so much this year. What are you going to do next? Next? What next? Don't bother me with such ludicrous questions, you silly female. I think he's going to go to Disneyland. He's going to have to wait until they build it, but still. What are your thoughts on the burglary? You must be very upset about the burglary. Quite so. If I ever find out who stole my dagger of Amun Ra, they won't live to regret it, I can assure you. Oh my! Do you have any idea who would do such a thing? I have my suspicions, but I need more proof before I subject him to the full force of my wrath. Have the police learned anything? Those incompetence. Hardly. They couldn't even find any clues around the dagger display. Sounds like the burglar might have been a professional. Perhaps. It's more likely the local constable couldn't find a clue if it jumped up and bit him on the bum. Or, it kind of sounds like it might have been an inside job if there were no clues left behind. And they managed to do it under the nose of the security guard. If the security guard isn't, you know, in on it, which is entirely possible, considering everybody is a suspect. They don't call this uh, chapter Suspects on Parade for nothing. Well, I guess he would be the best person to ask about Egyptology. Since you're an expert on the subject, what can you tell me about Egyptology? I don't have time to explain the intricacies of my profession to a neophyte. If you're truly interested, I'd suggest several years of difficult study on the subject at one of your better universities. Once you've finished that, you can talk to me again. Thanks, you've been a great help. Could at least tell us, you know, who Amon Ra is. Does this game ever actually tell you that? I don't think so. I believe that he is the fusion of the sun god Ra and uh, another Egyptian god, Amon. But that's all I know. Hardly an expert on the subject. Alright. Well, that's all we can ask him, so let's move on to this lady standing in the middle. Bonjour, Miss Bo. Dr. Carrington told me you were covering this party for the newspaper. I'm Yvette Delacroix. That's right, Miss Delacroix. I'm writing the social news column. Ah, the social news. I was thinking you were here about the burglary. The burglary? <laughs> of course not. The newspaper would never assign a female cub reporter like myself to such an important story. Ah, uh, you are probably being correct, Miss Bo. Trying to keep people in the dark of her true purpose here. I guess that is a good idea. And yeah, if that is basically Fifi, I guess, from the last game. Also, Yvette, Laura, and the narrator, all voiced by the same person. <laughs> Who does a pretty good job at keeping their voices distinct, I do have to say. Alright, let's go down the list. Sam Agostini. Monsieur Agostini? You know him? I understand he's a very powerful man at the newspaper. I would like to meet him sometime. I'm sure you would. How about Dr. Carter, who claimed you were hitting on him, and that he was resisting it? Ah, oh, Monsieur Pippin, he is such a great man. And quite attractive, no? I think the only qualification for you to find a man attractive is that he's a man. Even more so if they have some modicum of influence. How about Dr. Carrington? Dr. Carrington is my superior, so I'd rather not be saying the bad things about him. What bad thing? 
is very strange, even for a man. Ah, uh, but you are trying to trick me, no? It's best that I am not talking about him. Especially considering that he's standing right there. Still, that's interesting to know. How about Detective O'Reilly? Ah, uh, Monsieur O'Reilly, he's magnifique. He's so intelligent, so confident, so... Ooh la la. I assume you've met him before tonight. Oh yes, we are, how do you say, the old friends. And it never hurts to have the highly placed friend on the local police force, no? I suppose that's true. What do you think of his burglary investigation? People here, they keep saying Monsieur O'Reilly. His investigation of the dagger is not good, but he tries very hard. I have seen him work, but the dagger thief, he is very good, no? Hey? You think the burglar was a man? It is only the manner of speaking, Miss Bo. This burglar, she could have been the female as well. I see. How about Rube? <laughs> oh, the crud follower. I met him only once on the train. The train was a sleeper car. It was dark, and I climbed into his berth by mistake. He will always remember that meeting, I am sure. I, unfortunately, will have forgotten it in a few months. So, you slept with him. Great. Is there anybody you haven't slept with? Dr. Carter, I presume, considering what he said. But you've tried to, so he doesn't really count. How about Low Fat? The Low Fat, I know him. The little laundry I take to the cleaners, Low Fat does it himself. We have the deal he enjoys, so it costs me nothing. Yeah, we heard about this deal. I still don't really want to know. How about our dad? I do not believe I have met your father, Miss Bo, unless it was long ago and I have forgotten. I have met so many men, it is hard to keep track of them all. I'm sure you haven't, and I'm sure we should be glad about that. How about Ziggy? He seemed to say he knew you, at least when we talked to him this time. The annoying little man? I met him at this speakeasy long ago, but he is not my class of person, no? He is of the criminal type. He had some rather interesting things to say about you, though. Kind of implying that you used to be a prostitute. Too bad we can't really ask her about that. Although I guess it would be extremely rude to do so. What about Dr. Miklos, who works with her here at the museum? Dr. Miklos and I, we have much of the fun together. She is very friendly. Many times we have run through the museum chasing the daisy, no? Okay. Oh. How about herself? Yes, I am Yvette Delacroix, but I am not one to be talking about myself too much, no? I am not like the great Dr. Carter, who has so many of the great stories to tell. And even if he didn't, he would probably still love to talk about himself. How about Wolf Heimlich? Monsieur Heimlich, he's the intense fellow, no? Very military, very stiff and straight. I feel very safe around him, but I also feel uncomfortable. He patrols the museum so much. It is strange the dagger was stolen from under his nose, no? Do you suspect him of stealing the dagger? Who knows? I am not the policeman. But he seemed very upset about the burglary. Maybe too upset, no? Considering how seriously he takes his job, I don't think that's exactly proof, but... Something to keep in mind? How about Ramses? Monsieur Najir, he is a funny little man. I see him in many strange places in the museum, but he is only the accountant for us, so I don't understand why he is here all the time. Do you think Mr. Najir could have stolen the dagger? Why, because he is the Egyptian? 
I do not think so, Miss Bo, but I do not know him so very well. He is a man, after all, and who knows how they are thinking. So, Najir hangs out in places in a museum where he perhaps shouldn't, as just an accountant, and is here more often than we'd think. Interesting. How about the Countess? Ah, the Countess. She is not what she seems, no? What do you mean? Her last husband, he was afraid of her. He told me. Then as I learned more, I was becoming afraid of her, too. Why? She seems like a nice old lady. It is all the act, no? She is a dangerous one. Now I think she is after Dr. Carrington's money, since I am seeing them together so often lately. I don't understand. Why is she so dangerous? Just be trusting me, Miss Bo. Stay away from the Countess. People die when she's around. Oh dear. We still haven't actually met the Countess. And now it's starting to sound like maybe I don't want to. How about Steve? I got a feeling we want to keep you away from him as far as possible. Ah, this Steve. He is so big and handsome, no? I'm sure you're not his type, is what Laura would be thinking. How about the Tribune? I only read the financial section of the newspaper. The stock market, it is looking so good, I am going to buy some very soon. Again, I could not recommend that less. The police station? I support the police in every possible way I can. I'm sure you I do. I have never been to the police station, but I know many street cops and detectives, and they are all the gentlemen to me. I'm sure they are. It's so easy to just read everything she's saying as dirty. Because it probably is. Monsieur Lofat, he does some of the laundry, but I do most of the lacy and delicate things myself, no? Okay. How about the docks? The docks? Ah, there are many of the men down there and they are so big and so charming. They have been very generous to me. Again, I'm sure I don't want to know. How about this museum? The museum, it is such a wonderful place to work. The people, they are so friendly, and I am enjoying my work here. I intend to be the president someday. Actually, come to think of it, what does she do here? Dr. Carrington is the president. Dr. Carter is a curator. Dr. Miklos is some kind of historical expert. Heimlich is the security guard, but what do you do here? I actually don't know. How about this city? New York, it is a rough place for the newcomer, no? So many people in the one place, it reminds me of Paris, but it is where all the money is, no? The Americans, they have so much more money than the French. Um, I'm not sure I would compare Paris and New York. Especially not nowadays, I don't know if they were more similar back then, but I still doubt it. How about the speakeasy? She suggested she met Ziggy there. This big easy, it used to be the good place of the business for me, no? Then I got this job, so I don't have to do that anymore. What kind of work did you do at the speakeasy? I was the hostess there for a while. With your appearance, you must have gotten a lot of tips. Hmm, I suppose you could be calling it that. I got the very big tips. Oh my god. <laughs> How about our notebook? 
It is a nice notebook, Laura. Take the good notes and you'll be the good reporter. Thanks. How about you don't tell me how to do my job, I won't tell you how to do yours. If I knew what it was. Do you know anything about this magnifying glass? Do not look at me too closely, Miss Bo. I found the line on my face yesterday and I am still upset about it. I'm sure you are. Want some water? What are you doing with the water glass? Listening at the doors? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Actually, that's not a bad idea. How's your year going? Has this been a good year for you, Miss Delacroix? Ah oh, yes, every year is a good year for me, Miss Bo. It is all a matter of the attitude, no? Why, that seems like a very healthy point of view. Merci, Miss Bo. You are very kind. That didn't really tell us much. What do you think of the burglary? It is terrible to think someone could break into this museum and steal something so valuable. Monsieur Heimlich, he is all broken up about it, although he doesn't show it. How did Dr. Carrington react to the burglary? Dr. Carrington is a very dignified man. There is not much you can learn from his face. He seems to have taken the burglary very well, although he was angry with Wolf about the poor security. Do you have any idea who might have stolen the dagger? There are many suspicious people here tonight who could have done it. The Countess, for example, or the little man Ziggy. But I have not the proof, you understand? That's interesting. First you told us that Wolf seemed too upset, and now you're telling us that you couldn't really tell he was upset. And yes, we have suspicions enough, but no proof, so that doesn't really help us. Do you know anything about Egyptology? You should ask Dr. Miklos or Dr. Smith about that. Dr. Smith? Oh, we've heard about him before. And we can't ask about him. Not yet, anyway. Alright, well, that's everything for Yvette, so let's move on to the next person in line in the next video.